Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 25 Tips and Tricks video. Today we're going to be talking about all things grass and hay. Now in previous videos we talked about using grass and using hay, specifically in animal pens for our cows and water buffalo, as well as our sheep and goats. We've also demonstrated making silage out of grass in our silage video, but we really haven't talked too much about grass. Where does it come from? How do we make grass? And then how do we fertilize grass? How do we cut the grass? How do we harvest the grass? And where do we store grass and hay? And that is exactly what this video's intention is. Now, overall in Farm Sim, we have two different types of grass. We have grass that is planted in fields, like the one here on Field 50, and Riverbend Springs, well, actually has a fair number of fields planted in grass. Or we have what I call map grass. And map grass is going to be the grass that is planted around the fields or just in general areas. For example, like area here in 54. This is not a specifically defined field, but it does have grass here. And if we owned this farmland, well, we could come over here and basically harvest this grass. So let's go ahead and visit this area. This is grass by all intents and purposes. And this is cuttable grass if we own the land, but this is not a field. And being that it's not a field, it's not fertilizable, if that's a word. And since it's not fertilizable, we can't really increase or decrease the yield. We cut it, we harvest it, it grows back. We cut it, we harvest it. We really don't have anything to do with it. But we're not going to get maximum yield out of map grass like we will out of field grass. And that is because we can fertilize field grass. You can see down in the info box where it says fertilized 100%, yield bonus plus 95%. So we're gonna get far more output out of our field grass than we will out of map grass. Okay, now with that kind of handled, well, if you're on a map that doesn't have grass pre-planted or you wanna put grass maybe in a field that doesn't have grass already planted in it. For example, like field 41 here, you're gonna need a seed grass. And in order to seed grass, you're gonna need just a standard seeder. Nothing real special is gonna be required. Prepare the field as you would normally by cultivating it, plowing it if it lists that the field needs plowed. And then once you've done that, go ahead and just get a standard seeder. I've got the Limpkin Solitar here as an example. Put seed in it, select grass as your seed type, and go to town with seeding your field. It's pretty straightforward. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and fertilize the grass as you would normally with any other crop. Let it go ahead and grow to a ready to harvest state. And once it's in a ready to harvest state, well, that's when the work really starts because you're gonna need a mower. Let's go to shop and check out and see where these mowers might be located. Still, still do not understand. It's a rant for another day. It's a rant for another day. Just going to deal with it. We're going to deal with the vehicle shop. Clear our minds. Focus. Okay. Grassland. This is where we're going to find pretty much most of everything we're going to need with respect to grass and hay. Mowers. Well, we're going to need a mower in order to cut our grass. Fairly straightforward, right? But these aren't your grandpappy's lawnmowers by any stretch of the means. We have mowers that attach to the front of the tractor, like the GMD 3123F or the KDF 341S. These are going to attach to the front three-point hitch of the tractor, and you're going to lower it down and basically cut the grass directly in front of the tractor. It's going to have a working width somewhere around three and a half meters, typically, for this particular mower. From here, you could just collect the grass directly behind it with a forage wagon. We've demonstrated that in our silage video. Or you could use a baler and just bale the grass directly behind the tractor and make three meter swaths or three meter cuts through your field and bale it directly right away. There you go. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. You could also attach butterfly mowers to the rear of your tractor like the GM. 
D8730FF or the KDD941STH. I prefer the Semes mower here to the Kuhn mower simply because this mower allows you to wind row or not wind row your grass. And that can be extremely easy and beneficial with respect to then collecting it later on. So that's why I kind of prefer this butterfly mower paired up with this front mower in order to do any grass work if I'm going to use that particular combination. We also have side mowers, and these are going to be trailed side mowers. In fact, it's going to be on the back of your tractor. And when you lower this down, it's going to extend to the side of your tractor. So I call it a side mower. And you could pair this up with the front mower if you wanted to. And you're going to get, what, 3.4 meters of cut here and then 3.9 meters of cut there. So you're going to end up with a swath somewhere around 7 meters overall because there is a little bit of overlap. You could have a completely trailed mower like this Vermeer TM1410. This is going to be a trailed mower. It's going to attach to the back of your tractor. And then you're going to unfold it, and it's going to swing out either left or right. And you'll have the ability to change the direction at any point in time with your mouse button. Or you can have it swing out to the left one time. You can swing it out to the right the next time. Whatever kind of fits your bill. You have this interesting do-it mower. And this is going to attach to the rear of your tractor. But you are going to drive forward when you make use of this by using reverse drive. And I'm going to demonstrate this one because this is a really cool mower that's going to take advantage of the reverse drive feature of some tractors like the Voltra. And if, well, if you're going to go hog wild, you're going to go deep into the investment of doing grass and hay work, then you might be interested in the Big M450, the self-propelled mower. It's going to have a working width of 10 meters, right? It's going to be a pretty nice mower to go with. And this one, once again, has the ability to select that you want to swath it or put it into a windrow, or you could just spread the grass out completely wide. And, well, if you're going to be tedding it for hay, we're going to get to that in a moment, then you may want to spread it out wide just for the fact that you're going to be tedding it. And then after you tet it, you're going to have to windrow it, more on that in a minute, in order to ultimately collect it with a forage wagon or a baler. We're going to demonstrate both the crone and the do it in this particular video because I think those are the most unique mowers in this set. Once the grass has been cut, well, are you going to collect it for grass, or are you going to have to tet it in order to convert it into hay? If you are going to tet it, well, then we have four base game options from the Alpine Hit 4.4H Pottinger tetter, which is only 4.4 meters wide, all the way up to the HIT 1618T, which is 17 meters wide. We're going to demonstrate the Crone 820 Highland in this particular video. That's 8.2 meters wide. And this is going to basically scatter the grass. And as it is scattering the grass, it is going to aid it in drying. And in Farm Sim, tedding instantly converts the grass to hay. In reality, grass would sit out in the sun and be dried naturally, a feature I really hope they bring to Farm Sim seasonal cycles at some point because I really like the use of naturally drying grass into hay with the Seasons mod in Farm Sim prior to FS22. But at any rate, you're going to tedge your grass. It's going to instantly convert it into hay. And once you do that, well, you're going to need it back into a windrow because picking up grass with a baler or hay with a baler when it's not in a windrow, it's a pretty big pain in the butt. And there's a couple different ways of doing it. We have a merger, which is right here, or we have more of a traditional windrower. And back to our vehicle shop, let's go to our windrowers category and talk about some of our options. We have the Favorite 254 and Air 300F Alp. These are windrowers that are going to go to the front of your tractor. So you're going to mount these on the front of your tractor and you're going to drive forward in more of a natural way. And this particular merger, well, it's going to be able to either shift the grass to the left or to the right. It's a really cool thing. It's going to be collecting the grass with these little tines and putting it up here on the belt. And the belt is either going to shift left or right, depending on the direction that you want to shift your product. And you're going to get a windrow either to the left or right of your tractor. 
We have a Fara 254. This is more of a traditional tying wind rower where it's going to use these tines in order to move product back and forth. And we're going to be able to basically shift the product left or right with this particular device. And the little board here, which is going to help stop the product and put it into a windrow, is going to be able to alternate between left and right. But you may want to go with something bigger. And in that case, we're going to demonstrate this merger here. Now, this merger is going to attach to the back of your tractor, but it is not going to be driven in a traditional manner. Once again, we're going to use reverse drive from a Voltra or equivalent tractor in order to drive this forward being attached to the rear of our tractor. It's a really cool thing. If you've never seen reverse drive, then I think you're going to get a kick out of watching this video. But this merger, well, it has a couple of nice little tricks up its sleeve. It has the ability to merge left and right. And if I am remembering correctly, this one also has the ability to merge into the middle. We're going to demonstrate all of that. And then we have our traditional trailed wind rowers. We have the Z2840H, the Krone Swadro TS970, and the top 1403C. This is going to be 14 meters wide. We have one more merger that is in the base game, a trailed merger. And this one is going to be, again, trailed. We have the ability to unfold this. And again, this is going to have the ability to merge or move your product via belts left, right, or center. Once everything is into a windrow, well, you're going to need to collect it. And to collect it, you're going to either need a forage wagon, which is going to run behind your tractor and is going to pick up the product using a pickup wheel, just like this, and put it into the back. At that point, you're going to be able to dump it out of the back in either a stationary baler that we have in the game. We're going to demonstrate that in its own separate video at some point. Or you could dump it into a hayloft. And a hayloft is one of the placeables that is available in the game in the build mode. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We're going to go into build mode, shift P on keyboard. We're going to go to sheds, toggle over to silos. And here we have our hayloft, $63,500. It's going to hold 250,000 liters of either hay or straw. You can't store grass in game. You can only store hay or straw in a hayloft. As far as other buildings, while we're in here in build mode, we have a bale storage shed for $49,000. And it's going to be able to store 250 bales or pallets. And then we also have another use for grass, which we've already demonstrated in our silage video, is a silage bunker. And I've got a small bunker here. We're just going to real quick demonstrate it. But if you want more of a deep dive into silage, I will put a little tick up in the upper right corner. You can go ahead and check that video out after you're done with this one. Back to our vehicles and implements. Well, you can either use the forage wagon, as we've said, or you could use a baler. And we have a couple different options for balers. We have little small bales. I call them little baby bales. These are small square bales that you can pick up and move around without any sort of super strength enabled. We have the Massey Ferguson 1840, and it is going to be a small square bale. Or we could go with a big square bale, like we've got with this coon mower, or baler, I should say. Or we could go in round bale format, and we've got the Gouville G1 here to demonstrate that. So now that we've kind of covered all of the stuff that we're going to use, and we're going to find balers under their own category here, right? Square balers, we got the small square baler, then we have our larger square balers, then we have our round balers here. This is that stationary baler I mentioned. We're again going to have a complete video on this later on, so keep an eye out for that. We also have this really cool self-propelled round baler. Definitely worth checking out once you have the money to buy it, but we're not going to demonstrate that exactly in this video. Now, the bio baler, this is a very specific baler that we're going to use later on in a different video related to poplar because this baler is only used to bale poplar into poplar bales or basically wood chip bales. So, with that said, well, let's go ahead and just demonstrate some of these mowers. And why not 
why not go ahead and start talking about our Voltra and this do it mower that again I said runs in reverse drive we have it attached how one would attach it for use and for road transport so we're gonna drive this to our field in a traditional method make sure you have a front weight on this thing because this mower is one heavy beast okay we're going to go ahead and come here in the field we're going to unfold our mower and then once we do that we're going to change driving direction we're going to shift into reverse drive so watch this lots of cool animations going on in the cab and then our character is going to pop back in and suddenly now well, we're facing the wrong way uh, yeah and the reason we did this is now forward is reverse and reverse is forward so I'm still pressing W to go forward and I am going forward but I'm going forward in a reverse way and I can hit S and I can go backwards but really I'm going forwards if you pay attention to the orientation of what would normally be the tractor. And from this point, we're going to go ahead and line ourselves up, lower our mower, turn it on, drive forward, and there we go. All right, so now we are, we're mowing using the do it. It's pretty neat. I really like how this, how this mower works. Then once you're done, you're gonna shift B again to cycle back into a forward drive position. And now W is forward, S is reverse, like, well, like you would be used to. So I just wanted to demonstrate that because that's one of the cool mowers that came forward from FS22 into FS25. And I feel like sometimes it's used incorrectly because it's attached to the front of the mower. That's really not how it's intended to be used. The rest of our mowing, we're gonna make use of the big M. And the big M, the butterfly mowers, trailed mowers, they're, they're all gonna work under the same general principle. Um, the Samez that allows you to widespread or windrow is gonna be similar to the functionality of the big M here. So let's go ahead and just unfold things. And we can, well, we can change our working mode. So control Y, now we are left swath mode. So what we're gonna do is our left mower is gonna move product in. Our right mower is just gonna leave it down on the ground. Let's demonstrate that. So you can see I'm leaving a product on the ground on the right, but on the left, I'm pushing it to the middle. This could be extremely useful if you are working around a fence or a, a tree row in order to basically move that product away from the fence or away from the tree row to make working it, working it later with a windrower or a tether a lot easier. Control Y again. Now we're doing the opposite. Now we're windrowing on the right side and widespreading on the left side, right? We can control Y again, and this is going to widespread everything. So now we're leaving a 10 meter wide spread of grass in our wake. And then we can control Y one more time. It's gonna to switch to swathing mode, and that's gonna drop a big windrow right down the middle of our, of our mower. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finish mowing this out. I'm gonna mow the perimeter in swath drop, and then I'll mow the interior in widespread. 
And the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to collect some grass. I want to bale some grass with the balers. And then I want to head the grass into hay on the interior of the field. And then I want to windrow the interior of the grass also on the interior of the field just to demonstrate those steps. Now that I've got that grass field mowed, I've grabbed my merger here. The one that we have that goes on the back because I wanted to demonstrate, well, merging this grass into a windrow because we kind of need to fix our mess that we made here on this outer windrow or headland. So again, we've got this attached to the rear of our tractor and we're gonna be doing this in reverse drive. So let's go ahead and shift positions. And now that we have shifted our position, we can take a look at what's available as far as our merger goes. So we can change our work mode by hitting control Y. Right now it's set to left mode. Let's raise this up and turn it on. So you see our belts are moving to the left, right? So we're gonna shift product to our left. That's not really what I wanna do. So we're going to control Y. And now we're shifting our products to the right. That could be beneficial, right? We could go one way around the field, shifting to the right. We could go the other way and shift to our left and merge things together double product up. Well, let's go ahead and control Y again. And now we're shifting to the outside. Our belts are going left and right. So we're gonna leave two wind rows to either side of us as we drive through our product. And control Y again. And now we are back to shifting left. Okay, so it's left, right, or outside. I was a little mistaken when I thought that this one split the middle. That's probably the bigger Anderson merger that's gonna be doing that. Or that's just information from 22 that hasn't came forward into 25. And if that's the case, I apologize for that. Let's shift to, well, let's, let's, let's shift. Let's just demonstrate all three of these. So I'm shifting my product to the right. So you see, as I pick up the product, it's going to the right, as one might expect. Now let's shift both left and right. Let's drop her down and off we go. And again, as one might expect, we're now seeing Winrow both left and right. And then I can left shift Y again. And now I'm shifting everything to the left. So I really like this merger. It was a DLC in FS22. It's now made its way into FS25 as base game equipment. Now let's go hook up to the regular wind rower and see if we can't clean up our mess here a little bit more before we go and collect our grass. For our traditional wind rower demonstration, I'm just using the Samez wind rower that is in the base game. And the way this works is you unfold it and there are two rakes that come out and it's gonna basically move the product to the middle. Now, depending on the rake you have, for example, the, um, the crone, it shifts product to the right. So you're, you're trailing it and it's gonna shift. All three of these are gonna work the product to the right. You don't have the option of moving 
shifting this left or right. Everything is always going to be shifted to the right with the crone. With the semes, it's always shifting towards the middle. And the pottinger is also always shifting toward the middle. So to fix this, we're going to basically see if we can't pull this windrow that we shifted to our right with the merger and pull that back in line with the rest of our headland. Just like that. We're going to raise it up in its raised position. It's not going to move product. And we're going to now drop this back down and see if we can't grab both of these. All right, the one is a little bit outside the working with, that's fine. I'm gonna do a second pass and that's gonna fix it. But you can see basically what we're doing here, removing product left and right into the middle with our wind rower. Pretty basic, pretty straightforward, pretty simple operation. And the reason you're gonna do this is again to make it ultimately a whole lot easier to collect this with a forage wagon or with a baler because trying to pick it up in its widespread well that's just going to be a an exercise in futility so by the time we're done here it'll be as if we never play it around with the shifting of product. We'll just have a nice straight windrow that we'll be able to quickly pick up with our baler, which is what we're gonna demonstrate next. So here I have the small massive first in 1840 square baler. We're going to drop the pickup. We're gonna unfold. We're just gonna drop the little tray there at the bottom. And then we're basically gonna be able to turn it on. And at this point, well, we're gonna be collecting bales and remember in farm sim 25 we do have consumables so i've already loaded this up with our twine and you can see well we are we are pumping out those boils quite furiously once we've decided we're done we're going to turn it off we're going to hit y to push those bales out the back Pull this back up. We can lift, pick up back up, and well, we have our little square bales. They are 500 liters of capacity, and I can just pick these up and move them around because they're 81 kilograms. But we have 500 liters worth of little small square brass bales. Now we're also going to make little small square hay bales in a little bit because I want to demonstrate that with farm sim, well, we have different capacity bales for the same size depending on the depending on the input. So we're going to have different size hay bales to to grass bales, different size straw bales to grass bales, and of course straw is outside the scope of this particular video. Just like our little square baler, we're going to unfold our big square baler by X, we're going to lower the pickup by V, and we're going to be able to basically go to town. But unlike our little square baler, we have the ability to change bale size with our big square baler. We can do 220 centimeter bales, 240 centimeter bales, or 180 centimeter bales. So let's go ahead and make a few of each size. So I've set it to 180, and while it is set to 180, and while we are making a bale, we can't change the size. So the only time you can change the size is after the bale comes out of the baler. So 
let's grab the little res res residue residual here and make our way down here and pick back up the windrow where we left off with our little square bales you will need a larger tractor in order to use the square baler so that's why we've kind of upgraded our machinery here and we've now made a 180 meter or 180 centimeter square bale i've changed it to 220 centimeters so the next bale we get out will be 220 centimeters and i believe that grass was about 5,000 liters let's see where we are with our 220 and then we change it now to a 240 centimeter square bale Okay, now that we've made three different square bales, let's go ahead and turn the machine off, hit Y to push them out. And let's get them all three close to each other. So you can see we have 180 centimeter, 5,000 liter grass bale. We have a 220 centimeter grass bale, 6,000 liters. And we have a 280 centimeter grass bale, the largest, 6,500 liters. So 500 liters more to go to the biggest square grass bale and 1,000 liters up from the smallest square grass bale to the medium sized square grass bale. We also have the ability to make three different sizes of round bale. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that again with our grass. Now the keen eye among you will notice that we have switched balers. Well, that is because when I was prepping for this video, I didn't super notice that the Gouville only makes one size bale. So one can't really demonstrate all three size bales with a baler that only makes one. So when you're at the vehicle shop, how do you know this information? Well, let's go to our round balers. We have a G1 F125 Gouville. And we can see here it makes 125 centimeter bales. That's it. If we look at our Pro Belt, we're going to make 125 to 150 centimeter bales. It's going to be the VB3190. That's going to be the first one that's going to be able to make all three 125, 150, and 180 centimeters. The Crone Veripack will also, the John Deere C441R will only make 125 centimeter bales. The Gouville will make 125 to 150 and the Vermeer, well, it'll make 125 to 180. So really there's, there's three balers that'll be able to make all three size bales. A couple balers that'll be able to make the smallest and medium size bale. And then two balers they're gonna be stuck at the 125 only. So just like our square baler, we're gonna lower the pickup, nothing to unfold with this particular baler, and we are making 125 centimeter bales, according to the F1 menu. Now with round balers, you will have to stop when they get full. You'll have to unload by hitting Y. And then you'll have to hit Y again once they're unloaded. Or you can hit Z to turn on auto drop. So there you can see I had Z enabled. Let's go ahead and change now to 150 centimeter bales. And then after this, we'll make a 180 centimeter bale. 
We have a little warning buzzer that tells us, hey, your bail chamber is about full. Now, I'm going to turn off auto drop. Yes, I want to drop this one over by our other veil. And we are going to hit Y to unload the baler. Y again to close it. All right, so we have, this is a 150 centimeter bale. This is 5,500 liters. This is 180 centimeter bale, 7,500 liters. And then we have our smaller 125 centimeter bale up here. And it is gonna be the smallest capacity of all of our bales at 3,500 liters. So you can see where, depending on the size of the bale you make, and we will demonstrate here in a little bit once we have some hay, the fill type of the bale is going to have a pretty big impact on the overall volume of the bale. And as we discussed in our silage video, that can really play a important game with respect to making silage because you got to find that right ratio of the various inputs and then lastly we'll just demonstrate collecting grass with a forage wagon we have a forage wagon here we're going to drop down the pickup we're going to turn it on with b and we're going to drive over our windrow it's going to collect that and basically move the product into the wagon we could add a silage additive tank to the forage wagon if we wanted to. We've already talked about that in our silage video. And then once this is full, well, we're gonna take it back to our silage bunker and just unload in there. Again, we talked about specifically making silage with a bunker in our silage video. So if you haven't seen that, go ahead and check it out. It's linked down in the description there are multiple ways to make silage be that a silage bale waiting for it to ferment or putting grass or chaff into a bunker and compacting it and then basically covering it up with a tarp and letting it ferment or cook for a period of time and then it is converted over into silage so here we have our full forage wagon let's make our way over here to our bunker and we'll demonstrate unloading that into the bunker the technique i like to use is to start at the end make sure that we are all the way into the bunker and then slowly drive forward at a fairly steady pace in order to evenly spread the product out which will make ultimately compacting it easier in the end so let's start over here along the side I want to make sure that I'm definitely inside the bunker control I to force and load and then I just want to move forward steady speed maybe four miles an hour to dump the entire product here into the bunker so there you go we were a little short of the end, so we could have probably gone a little bit quicker. But again, it's going to vary based on the capacity of your forage wagon. Now let's talk about converting our grass into hay. We've pretty much exhausted grass and what we could do with grass, how we can make grass bales of different sizes, how we can collect grass. We've talked already in other videos related to our animals, how we would feed with grass. But ultimately, hay is a bit more 
useful. At least in my opinion it is. And for that, we're going to need to use a tether. Again, we're going to find that here under grassland. We have four different tether options. Mostly, they are just going to be larger tethers than the rest. We're going to unfold this thing. So this one has a nice feature in that we can shift the tether. We can kind of steer it. So let's sit and demonstrate this. Turn it on, and I've pulled my left mouse button down, and I've moved my mouse all the way to the left. And we're now kind of kicking it to the right. If we shift this, I can now kind of kick it to the left. And again, I held the left mouse button down, and I'm moving the mouse either all the way to the left until it stops moving, or all the way to the right until it stops moving. And we're basically shifting the product back and forth or we can bring it kind of back kind of to center and you see the way this is working we are basically kicking up the hay or grass spreading it out and in game it's instantly converting over to hay in reality it would fluff it up and it would aid in its drying process but it wouldn't necessarily instantly make it hay in reality now, of course, you could windrow, or you could tear a windrow, but it is going to spread it out a little bit, and then ultimately you're going to have to come back around and windrow it anyway again. So, why even really start out with a windrow if you know you're going to tear it? Because you're going to have to windrow it again in the end. So that's why I think the ability to have a mower that can widespread or windrow is rather convenient. Because depending on the tasks that you are working on, maybe you want to make silage bales, then you want to go ahead and windrow your ass. Because you want to go ahead and be able to pick it up with a baler. Or with a forage wagon if you're going to go ahead and make silage out of your loose grass. If you ultimately intend on tedding and making hay, well then, you're probably best to widespread, leave it spread out on the field. That way you can come through with the tedder and convert it to hay and then come through with a windrower and then once again bring it back into a windrow to make it easily collectible. Now I didn't go and demonstrate windrowing here with the hay because I figured well why uh, because pretty much it's the same as we did with the grass. I am collecting hay now with our forage wagon because I did want to go ahead and demonstrate the use of the hayloft. It won't store grass, it will only store hay or straw. So you see now that we have ourselves our hay windrows and we are picking up the fill type of hay. And once we have some hay in here, We'll go ahead and demonstrate putting that in our hayloft. I've also picked up several trailers that you can use to transport bales. Because I do want to transport some bales and store some bales over in the bale storage building. So there we go. That should be that should be enough hay. We're going to come over here to our hay loft and the input is going to be on the side. The output is going to be in the middle. So here we have the blower that is going to blow product up into the hay loft. We're going to hit I to unload. We are storing hay. If we come over here and check our prices screen it should show that we now have hay stored in our hay loft and if we come and position our trailer or forage wagon tmr mixer whatever underneath the output we can hit r and we can go and put hay back into our trailer now we're going to go and do the process all over again with making hay bales but the reason we're making hay bales and demonstrating this is 
that our capacities are going to be different. Our hay bales are going to be different than our straw bales, which are going to be different than our grass bales. So let's stop here because I want to demonstrate something. We had a little bit of grass left in our baler. We didn't have a finished bale. We had an unfinished bale of grass. And you can see we now have a grass bale here on the ground. Well, if you have an unfinished bale, then when you finish that bale out, it is going to be whatever the bale was when you started. So in this case, I had an unfinished grass bale. I put hay into the baler to finish the bale out, and I get a grass bale out. After I'm done making hay, maybe we're going to go and make straw later on. If I have an unfinished hay bale and I start baling straw, I will get a hay bale out of the baler. So always pay attention to if you have any unfinished bales. Now I'm making a, a fair number of these bales because I want to demonstrate the Arcusen multi-stack here in a little bit. And it is, I have to say, in my opinion, one of the coolest bale stackers available in the game. All right, so do you remember how many liters a small grass bale was? Pretty sure it was 500. Well, conveniently we have a grass bale right here. So let's verify. 500 liters for a small grass bale and it's 600 liters for a small hay bale, 35 kilograms, compared to 81 kilograms. Grass is heavier because it's wetter. And interesting enough, we have 500, an extra 100 liters of hay in our hay bale, even though they're the same physical size. Just like we demonstrated with the small square baler, we have an unfinished grass bale in our big square baler. So the first bale that's gonna come out is gonna be a big square grass bale. It's gonna be the largest square bale because that's what we left off with last time we made a bale. Now I've gone ahead and changed it to 180. So the next bale that we get will be a 180 centimeter hay bale. And then we will get a 220 centimeter hay bale. And then we'll go ahead and make a 240 centimeter hay bale. So let's refresh our memory real quick. Our smallest square bale, 180 centimeters is 5,000 liters for grass. Our medium square bale, 220, is 6,000 liters for grass. And our largest hay bale at 240 centimeters, our grass bale is 6,500 liters. Now let's come over here and see what these bales are as far as our hay is concerned. So our smallest square hay bale, 180 centimeters, is 6,000 liters. Our, our medium size square bale, 220 centimeters, is 7,250 liters. And our largest hay bale, 240 centimeters, is 8,000 liters. Okay, so we have quite the, quite the difference between our hay and grass volume. We're gonna see that same story continue with our hay round bales. Once again, I'm making our smallest hay round bale first, 125 centimeters. We'll turn auto drop back on. We now change it over to 150 centimeters. So let's make now our medium sized round hay bale.
And we're going to see that that bale is going to be, what, 6,500 liters. And then we'll make our largest round hay bale. And I'll turn auto drop off again so we can put these two side by side. I used the Merge Max, not the Merge Max, the, uh, I used the Merger to, uh, to merge these windrows and I did a left, right. So the largest hay bale is going to be right around 9,000 liters. Look at that. So our medium hay bale, 6,500. Our largest hay bale, 9,000. And then our smallest round hay bale, again, 125 centimeters. Well, that one is gonna come in at a low, low volume of 4,500. Now that we have all these bales on the field, well, how are we going to transport them and where are we going to store them? We've already talked about the bale storage building. 250 bales or pallets can be stored in this building. And we have our input and we have our output. So we have our input, which is going to be right here, where we're going to dump. And then we're going to be able to get the bales out by coming up to here. Don't have any storage right now, so the menu is not going to pop up. But our output is going to be in front of the input. Well, the first thing I want to demonstrate is I want to demonstrate this Arcusen multi-stack because this thing is so darn cool. It's almost worth using the little square baler just so that we can make use of this thing. So we're going to find this in the shop under vehicles, under bailing, category of transport. We have the Arcusen multi-pack D14. This is going to work exclusively with those small square bales. And it's going to make a big pack of square bales. 14, to be exact, as one might expect. Well, because it's 14 little bales go into a big pack. So, as you've seen there, we are limited to making a pack of like fill type bales. So, that is a little bit of a limitation because what we're doing is we're making one giant square bale with these little baby bales you see how it picks it up and then moves it over and then we'll shove it and then I'll raise those bales up and get ready to do the next set Right, so it's gonna move one in. This one move the other one in. And then it's gonna raise the whole set up. Those are hay. And when we're done, we can unload the bales. Why? Why? Now you see it, it visually, it's suddenly changed. Okay, that's, that's a limitation of the game. So here we have our little bales. And we could come up here and pick this up with a 
big bale trailer. Or we could pick this up with a forklift or a telehandler. Uh, I wouldn't suggest a skid steer. We could use a front loader arms if we had a big weight on the back of our tractor to counteract the weight of all of these bales. I may have made 14 with the hay, so let's just check. So I did make 14 bales, so here we go. We have all 14 now. We have an actual complete pack. Turn this off. We'll come over here, and I just want to demonstrate. Because, again, this is so cool. I like it a lot. Wide unload. Y again to actually unload it. Y again to actually put everything back together. And now we're ready to go to make the next set of bales. So this is a singular bale with 14 other bales in it. And we can see the twine here. All four rows of twine, twine making this into a singular thing. 8,400 liters worth of hay. Well, I can come up here and I can hit R. And when I hit R, well, now it is busted it up into 14 individual bales again. So I can make little bales. And maybe I want to make little bales because I want to be able to easily feed them by hand. And then I can wrap them up into a big pack with this, into a large pack. And then it will actually be able to be picked up with the other RQ's baler, bail trailer, the auto stack. Because the auto stack is going to work with square bales. So if we come back over here to the pack of square bales that we made. And we lower this down. Remember, this is the pack of bales that we made. We can see that these are individual bales. Right? Well, I can load 14 packs of 14 on this trailer. I can transport 14 times 14 little square bales. So what a heck of a way to really transport 196 little square bales. We make them with the baler. We then use our multi-pack to come through and make 14 bale multi-packs. Then we come through with this trailer which again is going to be under bale transport. And we have the RQ's in FSX 6372. And we pick up 14 of those. And then we can bring those over here and unload them. Now the question is, can we unload these into our bale storage building? Well, let's find out. So we're going to hit Y. And of course, it's a little silly we're unloading just a singular bale here, but you can imagine an entire stack of 14 bales here. And then once it's vertical, we're going to hit Y again. We're going to hit Y again. And there we go. Yeah, we have one bale in our storage building now. Now the other limitation with this baler, or I guess the biggest limitation with either of these bale trailers, the Arcusen Auto Stack or the Anderson, is that it's gonna be limited to picking up one bale size at a time. You know how we made different square bales and different round bales, right? Well, if I pick up the, let's pick up the medium square bale here. OK, 
Okay. The trailer is going to auto adjust its width in order to fit that bale. If I try to pick up now the big bale, it's going to say, nope, I can't pick up but more than one bale size at a time. So it's very important that when you are making your bales in your field, that you maintain a singular bale size once you get started. While you can make multiple size bales, you're probably going to figure out that, oh, I always want to make 220 centimeter hay bales. I always want to make 180 centimeter round or um, straw bales. And you can see we can pick up with this stacker, we can pick up different bale types, but they must be the same size. So here I have two of the same size bale. One is square, or one is hay, one is grass. But ultimately they are the same physical size bale. Now I want to come by and pick up the large bales because I want to show you how this does expand its width. So pay attention to how wide the trailer is as I come up to this large bale. And you see the sides spread out just a little bit in order to accommodate the larger bale. But again, we can only pick up one bale size at a time. The same is gonna hold true for the Anderson RBM 2000. Now it's gonna be able to transport 24 bales at a time, any of the three round bale sizes. Meanwhile, the Arcusen can only transport 14 bales at a time. We're gonna use the small bales to pick up here because we have um, four of those. And I wanna show you how this accomplishes loading 24 bales at a time. And I guess we only have three of these. It basically makes a stack of three and then it pushes that stack down. So it's really neat, the arm extends and up and around. And then when that three stack is made, it pushes it back and then makes room for another stack of three. Kind of neat, kind of cool. Again, we can do grass or hay with this one. The multi-pack is really the only one where we are limited to a single fill type per bale. And that is because it's making, it's a singular larger bale of that given fill type. Just like the other one, we're gonna hit Y to unload, but this one unloads horizontally, whereas the other one, the Arcusen unloaded vertically. So you can imagine a whole row of bales coming out the back of this now. And there we go, we put it into bale storage. Now there's another way of transporting bales with a loading device. Wouldn't really call it a trailer. Uh, it's probably not overly popular because it's a little, it's a little cumbersome and convoluted to use, but hey, that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to demonstrate as many methods as possible here in this video. And that is gonna be the Flegel round bale thing. So this is a three point hitch attachment. You can put one on the front, you can put one on the back, and you can basically transport two bales in the front, two bales in the back with this device. Uh, these bales are not um, secured in any way. So you may want to be a little careful with how you um, transport them, but it's possible. The way this is gonna work is we're going to unfold by hitting X we're going to lower the whole thing down. And we are going to address the bale. And we can left click and tilt this thing down a little bit more. And we're going to try to get these fingers under under the bale. Right? It's it's a little finicky. But it's possible. And then once we do that, we're going to raise it back up and we can hit X to 
kind of fold the whole thing back up. Now the veil's not on there super all the way, but it's on there nonetheless. So X. All right, we can drop this down. And kind of address this bail. Not lose our other bail. Like I said, this is not for your faint of heart, but it will work. Okay. Uh, we're probably not going to do this live. So let me fiddle with this for a little bit and I'll come back at you once we get this actually loaded legitly so you can see how it works. Look, there we go. Look, we're not faking it. We got it. We totally have it. So we've loaded two brown bales. One grass, one hay. They are kind of sitting in their cradle. So don't drive like a crazy person. And if we had another one of these on our rear, we could have picked up the other two bales. And we're gonna take this over here to our bale storage. At which time they are to pop in just like that. And if we want to get bales out, we're going to come up here, we're going to hit R, we're going to be presented. You know, which one of these do we want to output? And we're going to pick, we only have one of each, I guess. So let's go ahead and pick, well, here we have two. We can slider, do we want one of two? We want two of two. And there we go, we've outputted two of two. And we can now make use of these. The other way of transporting would, of course, be with like a flatbed and loading them manually with a telehandler, front loader, or wheel loader. And the last thing I want to talk about with respect to our grass is, well, how do we grass, how do we fertilize our field back to 100%? If you notice, our field's already at 50%. Did I fertilize something and not show you? No, I didn't. Uh, grass is unique. Grass is interesting. Grass is cool. The act of simply mowing grass gives it one fertilization state. All you gotta do is mow it, and presto, the grass is already at 50%. It likes to be cut so much so that it, it fertilizes itself. Well, you could come through here with solid fertilizer, liquid fertilizer, manure, slurry, any of your traditional fertilizing techniques. And we've demonstrated this in a fertilizing video, which we've recently published to the channel. But grass also has one other mechanical way of fertilization. And that's with the use of a roller. So this isn't just your everyday roller. This is a very special roller. We're gonna find under grassland, grassland care, the Dalbo Maxi Roll 630 Green Line. And we can get this with or without a cedar. If we get it with a cedar, we're going to be able to grass. We're going to be able to seed grass with it as well. We're just going to go without a cedar because, well, we don't need one. And it, the mere act of rolling this on our grass field is going to give us a fertilization state. You see, our texture behind our roller is changing, it's darker in color. That means that it is basically fertilizing. And if we now look at our fertilization menu, you can see that we are now up to two states with respect to the grass that is behind the roller. 100% fertilization. And it's it's obviously smashed the grass down a little bit. But that's fine. It'll bounce right back tomorrow. And you're at 100% fertilization and you haven't spent a dime on fertilizer, right? You're just mechanically rolling this grass down and it likes to be used and abused, right? Just cutting it gives it 50%, rolling it with this roller gives it the other 50% and you're all done. 
couldn't be any easier. Now, what do you use grass and hay for? We've made grass and hay. We've talked a little bit about using it for your animal feed. That's probably a predominant use for it. Grass could be used in order to make silage, which we've talked about in a silage video. But you could also sell grass or hay if you wanted. So let's go ahead and take a look here at our prices screen. Grass, you can sell. Remember, these prices are per 1,000 liters. $127 at the animal dealer or $129 right now at the farmer's market. It's going to have an average high on easy economy of $150 per 1,000 liters. Hay is going to have a slightly higher price because, well, there's a little bit more involved. Hay we're going to be able to sell at, right now $164 per 1,000 liters at the animal dealer, $157 dollars per thousand liters down to farmer's market with an average high in January on easy of $186 per thousand liters. So guys, that's it. That is basically the gist of grass and hay. How do you plant it? How do you harvest it? How do you collect it? How do you store it? What do you use it for? And what type of machinery do you need in order to get each and all of those steps done? Hope you all liked this video. If you did, please go ahead and click the like button. Let me know what other ideas you have. I have basically stuff in store for the next month to drop as far as daily how-to videos in our tips and tricks section. If you're new to Farm Sim, that's great. I hope these videos are helping you out. You know what? If you're a well-experienced Farm Sim player, you might just get a nugget or two of useful information out of these as well. By all means, please go ahead and share this video with anyone else that you know that may be thinking about Farm Sim or is playing Farm Sim. And until next time, happy farming.